I'm so uh, pleased to be here. I'm the beneficiary of all the work that everybody up here does and that a lot of people of you in the room do. You see, my story doesn't begin with the killing of a tree. It starts with the birth of a tree. A tree is um, not a tree. Like each of our children, it grows up in a family. It grows up in an environment. It has a life. And that life changes depending upon the experience that that tree has. And the music that results from that tree depends upon the life that that had. Let me give you an example. 80% of all the acoustic guitars built in the United States of America have an Alaska Sitka Spruce top. If that top came, if it's, a, if it's a nice, beautiful instrument, if it came from an old growth Sitka tree, in American perspective, that tree was probably growing before Columbus encountered America. Those of you from Africa and Europe and Asia could put it in your own perspective in terms of going back 500 years and thinking about the character and the life, the animals, the ecology, the other trees that surrounded that tree. Sometimes sun, sometimes drought. Sometimes a tree falls over beside it, leans on it, twists it, sometimes the sun shines on it, sometimes it doesn't. When that tree at the end of its life is blown over or dies or is salvaged, we collect it, we study it, and we turn it into music wood. We have decided in, in our company at Fidel Guitars that we will use no clear-cut trees because that tree grew in an ecology and an environment that made that tree what it is. And the last thing we can do is dishonor the home of that tree that grew. That's in Sick, Alaska, where we then sort through and process the top woods to come out with a guitar that speaks the voice and the beautiful music that each one of us create that love to play music. This particular guitar is called the Earth Song. This Earth Song has that 500 year old salvage top on it, but it's also made 100% from woods from the United States of America. There's no hardwood, rainforest woods in that instrument. It's got a big leaf maple back and sides, a hard rock maple neck, and a walnut fretboard and bridge. It sounds incredible. To accomplish what we're trying to do at Bedell Guitar Company, we've had to travel all over the world to find new sources of people that will work with us. We call it the Bedell Tonewood Certification Project. And we want to go back exactly to each individual tree, grab as much of its story as we can, know the GPS coordinates for where that tree grew, so that that individual tree is part of the guitar. And then we produce what's called a seed to soil journal. It's a book about your guitar, and it tells you where it came from, the story of the tree, the story of the families that harvested it, the people that handcrafted it and built it. That's not just a thing. It's something that grew out of this gift of Mother Nature. So for example, we have the largest collection of Brazilian rosewood for tonewood instruments in the world that is legally documented and certified, shipped out of Brazil pre-1967, when limits were put on the export of Brazilian rosewood, it was stored in Spain, and now has found its way to us to make beautiful instruments and the wonderfulness of the DNA tracking that we're learning about is ways to absolutely confirm and make sure 100% that every one of the pieces of wood that we put into an instrument meets that pre-1967 deadline. This is just an example of one of the beautiful instruments that that wood has resulted in. Then we've gone another step, and that is that we produce a little booklet we call a plant and animal listing. And this goes in every guitar we ship, and it lists for that particular guitar where the, uh, what the common name is, what the um, biological name is, the country of origin. And so that when you're going through customs or immigration, 
And the customs officer can't tell the difference between Brazilian rosewood, Madagascar rosewood, Indian rosewood, Indonesian rosewood, or any other rosewood around the world. We put it in here to verify so the officer knows whether it's a listed species and paperwork should be associated with it or whether it's not. What I've learned today is we're going to go one step farther starting in, 19, in 2016. And that is when we take our, our wood to cut out the pieces for the guitar body, we have scrap. So let's say you have a square top and you cut out your body. We have pieces left over on the sides. I'm going to start collecting a piece from each piece of the tone wood and put it in a little bag and put it in that guitar case. Because with DNA testing, you have to destroy the instrument. If I put those pieces of guitar that match, they come from exactly the same pieces of wood in the guitar. If somebody wanted to test and confirm, like the gentlemen here are learning to do, they'll be able to do that. So I want to go one step farther in helping the system. The other thing that we're doing is we're working with uh, Dudley, Andrew Dudley at Treetag, and he's setting up with the wood suppliers that we have recruited, actually tagging the stump of when the tree was harvested and, and, and following it all the way through the system until it arrives at our uh, door. And then we follow that with a code system all the way through our building. Our goal is that when you buy a Vidal guitar in the future, you'll be able to log in that serial number and it will take you back to every location where those woods came from, the story of the tree, and so you'll know from the beginning of life to its, your instrument, you'll know that story. And we're hoping that other guitar companies and other consumer products companies will follow that to help build legitimacy into the complete supply chain. Thank you very much.